Good morning. Welcome to NEET SS 2023 recap. So NEET SS 2023 was conducted uh, in September 2023. That's last year. And we are now almost like four months uh, into the exam. And what is uh, basically the need to do a session like this right now is a question which many people might ask me because the exam is done and dusted and people have joined already and started off with their courses. This is definitely for uh, people looking ahead into the next year's exam or rather into the 2024 exam that we're doing this recap. This recap is mighty important for many reasons. Uh, primarily because we are having two categories of students now and uh, that division or bar is very, very important. Those entering into their third year of MD, DNB, so they form the first category and the major bulk category who are the hot favorites as far as the exam is concerned. We will see why. And then we have this uh, minority category who we generally, it is not right to call them repeaters, but it's in a way that they have written the exam once. But here I'm mostly focusing on those people who have had take, who've taken a break and are coming back into the scene, maybe after a year or a couple of years. And there is one more category, people who have done their pediatrics MD or anesthesia MD, DNB and uh, wanting to come into the medical stream. Like for example, a pediatric person wanting to take up endocrine or nephrology, anesthesia person wanting to take up critical care. So these are the three categories whom we are trying to cater to. So I think I've already mentioned this a lot of times before as well, that the experience that we've had with this exam is very less. This pattern examination started only in 2022. So how many exams have we had? We have had only two exams like this thus far. So to make big time extrapolation with respect to these two exams is not very easy. So how many questions do we have for this exam? We have 150 questions, which are basically medicine based. Why do I say in the beginning itself that these are the hot favorites? Now, these guys are going to be the hot favorites and beating them per se is not going to be easy. So the people who are entering into their final year of MDDNB and are going to give the exam this year, their MD prof exam as well as the exam of exam NITSS this year are definitely the most to most hot favorites. And for these guys to come and beat them is mostly not a practical proposition. Why? Because this exam has 150 medicine questions. That is what they supposedly say. Okay. But if you look at these 150 medicine questions, even last year or year before last, we do have a lot of questions on genetics. It's around seven, eight questions on genetics. We do have at least five, six questions on basic sciences. That means the uh, physiology part, the pathology part, etc. We do have around six, seven questions on biostatistics. Okay. If you add up these questions, and then of course the basic science related questions also will come to that. You add up these questions, these questions would actually come to approximately 2025. And what they have asked under infectious diseases, what they have supposedly asked under infectious diseases is many of the times microbiology, identifying the organism, knowing basic points about the organism, knowing listeria are intrinsically resistant to cephalosporins and that listeria are very responsive to ampicillin. These are all neat PG level questions. So the time gap that you take between neat PG and neat SS does make a lot of difference with respect to your result. It has gone to that level that if you make a neat PG student, neat PG aspirant write neat SS exam, he may some, sometimes outsmart you and score more. More because there are so many questions which are centered around these to, to be very precise around 25 30 questions and that can make a lot of difference so the more time you are actually taking to write this exam from the finishing of your course would actually make you lose your chances of getting a great rank or dwindle your chances with respect to getting a great rank. So that is why if you are serious about pursuing a DM course, that is primarily up to you. And there are so many pros, cons, etc, etc. And that's not the topic for discussion here. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be giving the exam as early as possible because of the reason that the preparation that you do for your MD final year exam is more than enough for a vast majority of questions as far as this exam is concerned. So apart from these basic uh, issues that I have discussed, if you look at the core five chapters from where majority of the questions come then it is neurology cardiology liver i'm not saying gastro just liver endocrine and nephro so these are the five chapters from where we have majority of the questions coming and even if you leave all the other chapters and go that means including rheumatology including hematology including uh, all the other chapters, pulmonology and go and just try to answer those questions with the basic PG level knowledge you have. These guys are going to manage big time EC. For them, there is no specific preparation required for the other chapters. Whatever they have studied for their final MD professionals, which is mostly the medicine videos that they watch under this SS, that is more than enough to crack all the questions from the other chapters. The kind of questions which require you to specifically prepare are going to be coming from only these five chapters. That was the case last year. That was the case in 2022 also. And 
and as far as 2023 exam is concerned, the onus has shifted considerably towards neurology and towards endocrine. Towards endocrine, I need not say because endocrine is already a big time hot specialty, but there is a considerable onus shift towards neurology. That's why people who are preparing seriously for their MD finals where you need good amount of neurology knowledge are the hot favorites here. If you are asking me to do a recall session in any of the subjects as far as this particular exam is concerned, I can do with considerable ease, but I cannot do it in neurology this time. It's not easy. You can actually see Bashik's uh, recall session neurology need test 2023 majority of the questions can be discussed only by a neurologist cannot be discussed by a medicine person there are so many questions which are core neurology so it will be tough for everyone understood but neurology knowledge has to go one step above and cardiology i need not tell you because cardiology whichever format of exam you take now whichever format of exam you take i would recommend you to watch nishan sagar's videos just because you are a medicine doctor not just because you want to become a cardiologist or neurologist his cardiomyopathy heart failure videos and of course the videos on asar ms and mr are an asset to you through your entire preparation to your entire what is your practice okay so uh, cardiology videos are going to be an asset for you for your entire life and cardiology videos are also very very important because cardiology questions are also one step above you basically can't answer with your medicine knowledge maybe few questions you can answer with your medicine knowledge but not possible to answer everything so as far as the exam is concerned these five are definitely hot and we'll try to dissect them and see as to what level of knowledge you require for each but essentially if you look at a md final year student who is actually going to give his exam for him things are in perfect place he is already preparing for his md final year exams so basically he is going through the medicine videos he may be reading harrison but again that is debatable because most of the updates that we have discussed are not part of harrison if you look at ada 2024 esh 2023 or you look at uh, gold 2023 gina 2023 kdgo 2022 all these updates are like going to be coming in harrison maybe in another four years five years time so definitely that's not the topic for discussion and reading slide by slide harrison sorry page by page harrison chapter by chapter harrison and thinking that you are good at medicine is basically just useful to fox your friend or a junior who hasn't read if you come to a real time competitive scenario it doesn't hold anything great so essentially this is what you have to be learning so we'll try to dissect the uh, whole exam chapter by chapter and see but why these people are the hot favorites because of the simple reason that for them this is also going to be easy this is also going to be easy and that would actually put them in a very very good space so what can the others do so that's the first question so this video is primarily designed towards these people the people who are actually the repeaters now repeaters are people mostly we don't have these chronic repeaters and all now primarily because there are a lot of seats so it's not that a difficult task to get a seat into ss it's not like the times when we were writing where vast majority would fail and only one percent would get in this is the other way around now so repeaters who mean people who have taken a pause for one year and are doing sr ship and writing the exam the next time who wrote the first time maybe got a rank of 1500 2000 so want to write the exam the next time for them this is the time period where they have to start preparing so till now they've taken a break maybe february or march they can actually start off with the preparation when they are starting off with the preparation they have to be very very sure that they do once again go back and study medicine in detail before going to the subject unless and until they are core INA aspirants and they are we're not discussing about INA aspirants here we're talking about the vast majority of students who are actually neat as aspirants so you have to go back to medicine watch the medicine videos understand the medicine videos in detail and have you'll be having your own notes so just again going back through that that is essentially going to the core how to approach each chapter we'll again come to at the end of this then of course additionally what you have to be watching after you finish that will be the high yield series so the high yield series will be high yield series is already there in the app and we'll be having more additions to the high yield series including biostatistics including few more videos of gastro a few more videos of pulmonology etc etc those are the things that are going to be added but whenever you watch the high yield series alongside with medicine always keep in mind that these five chapters will rule the roost and apart from these five chapters whatever questions they are asking you including biostatistics genetics etc are not possible for us to study beyond a limit you may get seven questions in genetics for that if you study the whole genetics what will happen and finally what are they asking mode of inheritance of retinoblastoma mode of inheritance of tuberous sclerosis these are core mbbs things so you are actually having to spend a lot of time and study that is not making sense so it is just a test of how much you knew at MBBS level, micro you knew at MBBS level, patho you knew at MBBS level, that cannot be beyond a limit a kind of improved upon by you. And that is the same reason why I am telling you that when you are watching the genetics videos also, do understand that, don't have to go cover to cover that way. A basic reasonable understanding is enough. And biostatistics videos are also going to be uploaded and then you can actually watch that. But again, what I have felt is that biostatistics videos are, or those questions that have come for the exam are 
MBBS level by statistics only. So that's the reason why the more gap you take from your MBBS, then there is a problem. So for them, this is the basic uh, plan. People who are finding it difficult to actually come into terms with the exam are people whose MD courses are another subject, especially the uh, guys who come from anesthesia background and pediatrics background. I'm so happy and proud about them because many of them have tried to actually learn the whole medicine, come into terms with medicine, and then again watch the high yield series videos. And they have, they may be actually taking a bit more time, but their commitment is actually more. I have found anesthesia postgraduates to be the most committed out of the lot. I think their level of commitment has increased considerably. I think during the course of their three year training, maybe they are much more disciplined, much more focused, and much more, uh, what do you say, on to the target rather than the medicine people I, whom I have seen. So essentially for them, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a task because they have to change gears. It's like asking me to study pediatrics and then appear for another exam. It is possible because I have done my internship in pediatrics reasonably well. I can start and take a lot of time. It's not easy for me to just like that dwell into pediatrics. Even when I see a case now, like three year old, four year old child, the, the thought process will not come straight into my system. I have to maybe discuss with three, four people, then I go and see, then only I'll understand. So that difference will be there, but you can obviously kind of sort it out. Then the question, is like okay you've said to start with medicines you've asked to start with medicine then uh, what is the modus operandi or what is the kind of plan because there are so many chapters let me just make it very clear that uh, the bulk discussion is on these five chapters other chapters we can just kind of watch on watch on watch on just very superficial level knowledge is more than required where we have to be dwelling deep are endocrine uh, nephro cardio of course um, and hepatology so when you think of endocrine endocrine medicine videos have been done in detail endocrine medicine videos under your ss whatever are uploader are actually a little different from the neat pg videos so there have been done in detail every cover every nook and every corner has been actually covered what you have to do in addition i think are mayur's high yield ss videos which will take you to the next level but even if you don't go to the next level 85 90 percent of the questions you are safe what i have not covered like i would say is the pediatric and the gynecology part of that which is the reproductive endocrine part which i have not done in detail if that those portions if you can actually watch from mayur's uh, i mean mcq discussions and the high yield series which especially is your disorders of sexual development etc that again would be the only other thing that you have to be doing as far as nephrology is concerned i can tell you that even if you don't watch a single video of nephrology ss under marrow it's perfectly okay nephrology medicine level videos are more than enough to answer the questions that they have been asking now so nothing more required cardiology uh, is actually speaking the easiest subject to score easiest subject to score because although cardiology is very vast they will ask you questions only on certain set topics including cardiomyopathy uh, heart failure uh, pericardium and of course your valvular heart disease if you know valvular heart disease asir msmr cardiomyopathy pericardium and of course heart failure that settles the deal for 90 percent of the questions and uh, you can watch my discussions which are very really basic level cardiology discussions and then follow it up with the high yield series of nisha and if you watch nishan's videos during your md preparation majority of people are actually watching nishan's videos during their md finals for their practical exams so that will be more than enough the uh, liver videos again I have done in considerable detail so I have done liver videos in good depth and you follow it up with uh, Dr. Tarun's SS videos high yield series under that high yield section I think that should be enough for you. The subject where you are going to have a bit of a problem is neurology because neurology is very vast and you are learning neurology during your final MD also. People who are not in final MD and coming from anesthesia background etc it's a little tough. As far as neurology videos are concerned the positive part is that Dr. Bashek has done a recap sorry not recap a concise neurology section under high yield where he has covered every topic and trialed. So all the neurology things have been concised into a very short format. So it's not practical for you to watch the entire neurology videos underneath as neuro. So you can go to the high yield series and watch everything and simpler discussions you can see my style of discussion also which is a more basic neurology and what he has done is the advanced neurology part and you can actually club both and do or even if you do his videos from the uh, neat SS part high yield series that is going to be enough. I think this is essentially what you need to do to give you more and more uh, inputs with respect to the exam and daily daily updating you telling you this is to do that is to do is basically out of question and i feel really what i say irritated to be coming and doing that see this is a session that we're doing after hiatus a few months that's primarily because you should be asking this question to yourself like how old am i and is this the age to seek advice when you when you actually type and ask for advice you should be thinking about yourself like how old are you because at your level i think this is there are there are changes but at your level generally maybe 10 15 years ago the the student who was appearing for this including me and everybody else was married and was the father of a child so at that age if you are keeping on asking for advice it means there is something seriously wrong with you so please have uh, please do ask questions on basic guideline with respect to an exam 
I want to appear for IAS exam now. I am not eligible because 32 is the upper limit. But if you are appearing for IAS exam now, I can't be going and going and digging into every small thing. I should be knowing as to whether I am good enough for that. I should be knowing as to what is the kind of subject that I need to take. And I should be also knowing as to why I want to do this. So, so nobody is there to decide. I am the person to decide the fate of my course because MD medicine is a course with so many people at so many different levels have done and done so many things out of that. Deepu Sabin, who is the CEO of Marrow, has also done an MD medicine course. I have also done an MD medicine course. Dishant has also done an MD medicine course. We have all done MD medicine course, but we are doing different, different set of things with that. So need not necessarily mean that we all have to do the same thing. So what you need to do out of this course, what you need to gain out of this course, what kind of a living you need to make out of this course is all purely your you are you are you are you are purgative or basically it's up to you to make a decision unnecessarily kind of uh, digging deep into the exam and every day asking about this to study that to study that is for a school student okay obviously we have grown beyond that so that's why my life after empty dnb medicine is purely my purgative and me asking that uh, asking about that asking an advice about that to anybody for that matter doesn't make any sense i am grown up enough to make a decision upon that if i am not grown up enough then i have to think as to what is wrong with my upbringing why am i not grown up enough so is dm the real need of the hour or is it peer pressure is the other major question dm is not peer pressure but uh, md is basically very competitive so once you are passing out as an md medicine person if you want to really survive you have to be extraordinarily good because your diagnostic skills are going to come to the fore. So you just cannot uh, kind of bank on a hospital or corporate to give you the necessary boost. Can't do that. So you have to be slogging yourself and doing it. So MD medicine is more than enough for people who continue, want to continue uh, with the medical, medical college system, who are very happy in the medical college system, who want to set up their own practice and who want to set up their own hospitals, who are actually in tier 2 and tier 3 cities even if they don't do DM and continue with their medicine, their medicine knowledge will improve, improve, improve and they can really, really kind of uh, make it big. But otherwise, if you are planning to get attached to a hospital, you're staying in a tier 1 city and then you are basically continuing with medicine means it doesn't make sense. Those are the people who have to shift gears, but there is no pressure as such. I see a lot of people just out of peer pressure because 8 out of 10, 8 out of the 10 classmates I had for MD joined for DM. I also should join for DM. See, when you are joining for DM, you remember that you are actually kind of losing on a very powerful weapon that you've had and that weapon is your medicine and you will lose it because if you do gastroenterology at the end of 3 years, definitely you are going to be subpar with respect to medicine. You can never compete with a person who is updated with medicine. I am myself finding it extremely hard. I am taking that extra mile effort to go and be updated with respect to these procedures and to understand what's happening in the other specialities. It's not easy. But when you are in medicine, that power of diagnosis that you have, no, you think about it, whether you really want to pursue is also an important thing because the specialities are all skill-based, except for rheumat and endo. All the others and neuro to, a, to, to an extent are, no, are skill-based. So when you're going to a skill-based specialty, if you don't have the necessary skills, you'll be found wanting. So whether you are having the skills, whether you're having good hands, the language is different, the narrative is different, the entire kinetics of the subject is different. Whether you can adapt yourself to that difference in kinetics is the most important question that you need to be asking yourself. And if you are set and ready for that and you are very clear about your clear about the fact that you want to be doing it, definitely get ahead. But no doubts with respect to the fact that even if you stop with medicine, there is nothing, nothing pegging you back and there is nothing that you need to feel bad about because ultimately we have all actually done this course to study medicine only and there is nothing beyond that. Okay, so views again, uh, as far as our MD preparation is concerned, nothing, uh, see, as far as our whole exam is concerned, if you are an MD final year student, nothing else you need to do. Whatever I have said will hold you in very good stead. To wait for a year or two to strengthen medicine by personal life is always welcome and nothing you are going to lose out of that. You may have to just come back after a pause and see, now is the right time for you to start preparing. And if preparing after a hiatus, what to do is what we have actually seen. So there again, you need to start with medicine, get a good grounding on medicine and then go forward. Okay, so let us start off. So focus on medicine. This is for the other subset. That means the people who are actually doing uh, uh, pediatrics and anesthesia have finished and then are coming back. For them, the focus is always on medicine and to do the high yield series, especially cardiology, neurology, high yield series. And on the whole, what I feel is reading is a waste of time. Absolutely, because in during our times, we had to read because we had no online platforms or no online source. So we got to gather information from so many places. Right now, it doesn't make any, any sense or any sense whatsoever. If you try reading neurology, even if you read for five years, you will not be able to get the points that he has said over a period of say, seven hours or eight hours because those are condensed, concise, the most high yield points. For us to figure it out from the textbook is really impossible. And the experience that is added on to that is also too much. And the textbooks are not updated as well. Okay, 